Hello, I'm TK. Recently, a friend requested that I make a fairy door for his daughter to discover in his back garden. For those of you who don't know, a fairy door is essentially just a facade, like a miniature door, put it against like a rock or a brick or a log, something like that. Uh, and the idea is that it's meant to look like a, a little creature, like a fairy lives inside it. So I had a route around, looked through my bits, uh, found various bits and pieces which I could put together, and I came up with a little fairy door and window for him. So let's get to it. I decided to use a door from Mantic's Dungeon Saga for the project. I also cut out a small piece of foam to use as a frame for that door. You can see me cutting around the outline of the door here, so that the foam will be nice and snug around it. While watching back these videos, I feel like sometimes I'm being unsafe with a knife. I think that's just a video thing though, I definitely had a good grip on the equipment. After a bit of clean up I got the foam to fit around the door pretty well. I realised that the door's threshold was a bit awkward though so I decided to trim that off. It was a lot harder to cut off than I thought it would be. Mantic used some tough plastic. My trimming of the bottom of the door was not very precise so I cut an extra bit of foam off to cover my mistakes and made my own little stone threshold. The friend I was making this for intended on gluing it to a brick in his back garden, so I mounted the door onto a piece of cardboard to give it a nice flat surface for him to glue with. I noticed that the foam was peeling away from the door a bit whilst drying, so I used some elastic bands to keep it secure while I worked on the basic window shapes. My friend had requested a little window to go with the door, so I made that out of foam too. The window frame is just made from tiny strips of cardboard offcuts which came from the backing board for the door.
Now with the glue all dry, I got a blunt pencil and started scoring a field stone effect into the foam. This is pretty fun to do. Uh, I've never worked a foam in this way before, so I was just kind of winging it. Um, I think it turned out quite well though. I did a similar thing with the windows and tried to score in an uneven glass effect for the panes. Then I gave it all a prime with my airbrush. I used a dark grey for the prime because I plan to do a lot of the stone effect with just a simple overbrush. Now this is a technique that I stole from Stefan Bacorni of Dwarven Forge. Uh, you colour in a few distinct shades into the stonework and then dry brush over the whole thing in a uniform light grey and it works really really well. Here I'm painting the stone door frame with a light grey. I'll be applying the final dry brush over these stones as well.
I base the window panes in a dark blue and plan to give it some lighter shades later. Now here's the dry brushing part of that technique. So it uses the dark grey primer as the base colour, so you're effectively doing most of the paintwork in just two steps, which is great because I am lazy. I wanted the wood to have a reddish oak colour to it. I started off with a nice dark brown, then made various shades of orange brown mix later for dry brushing the centre of the piece with. This means that the dark shades should be around the edges and recesses of the wood panels. This will give it a natural looking variety to the hues. I'm using the same browns to paint the window frame, although I found that it needed some extra work, which I'll get to later.
I have to apologize for all the hair shots. I was trying to be careful with the metallics here so as not to ruin the wood effect. So I had to lean in close sometimes, which means you get a uh, full frontal view of various hair follicles. Sorry. For the window panes, I used a similar method to the wood effect. I mixed a couple of shades of progressively lighter blue and applied them to the dark blue base to give an interior glow effect. I realised that the wood looked a bit dull on the window frame, so I thought I'd do a bit of edge highlighting with an orangey brown mix in order to give it some better definition. Here I'm applying some gloss varnish to the panes to make them more shiny. Finally, I slathered the whole thing in matte varnish to protect it from the elements. Here is a picture of the finished thing that my friend sent to me once he'd installed it. As you can see, I also painted up a couple of other little details that he could include. Uh, the mushroom, for example, I made from green stuff and then just painted up. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.